Welcome back to TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG. Today's session is going to be aluminum part two. And we're going to show you some advanced techniques based on some of the questions that you've asked. So keep those emails coming. Now, one of the things we're going to do is we're going to put two pieces of aluminum together. We're going to butt to butt weld them. We're not going to use argon gas backup. It's going to be aluminum with argon shielding gas, nothing underneath. It's going to free fall. And in that free fall process, you're going to find that you're going to let the oxides work in your favor. Now, we're going to use a TIG welding machine that has some advanced features to it. One of them is it runs off 115 volts or 220. And today, we're plugged into 115 volts. So we're going to utilize about 100 amps to weld these parts. But there's something else that's going to improve your art characteristics that you couldn't have on the old transformer machines. And what that is is frequency. You used to be stuck with 60 hertz or 60 cycles per second frequency. And in an aluminum arc, an AC arc, it's not a very efficient arc. So with the new technology, we're going to turn the hertz up and you're going to hear the difference not only hear it, you're going to see it, and we're going to demonstrate it so you can hear, see, and watch it all at the same time. Now, we've got 6061T6 aluminum. It's 0.125 or 1 8 inch thick. It's going to be butt to butt. What we don't want is a gap. Now, when you're welding other materials like steel, it's common to put a gap in there, but aluminum just doesn't like it. So, no gap whatsoever. We're also going to use argon gas for the shielding. And something very interesting, we're going to be using a 1 16th diameter tungsten, and it's going to be pointed. Now, the reason it's going to be pointed is because we have a setting on this machine that can change the balance. And the balance is a balance between penetration and cleaning. Now, with a point on there, we're going to be able to turn this machine up to as high as 150 hertz, and our balance is probably going to be set on 71 to 75 percent negative balance. So very seldom do you want a 50-50 balance. Again, ER4043 filler material, 1 16th diameter. Okay, we've initiated the arc. You can see the oxide leaving the plate. Okay, we've got a puddle, and I'm going to start to dab. Now we're running right now at about 60 hertz. And I'm going to have this machine adjusted while I'm welding to increase the hertz, and you should hear it. Now what that's doing is it's running a tighter arc. And the reason you want a tighter arc is if you want to create a little more penetration, whether it be for a butt weld or for a fillet weld. I'm going to add a little extra at the end so it doesn't create a crack. I'm going to back off on amperage. And now we're finished. Okay, I just finished welding this, and I marked the plate. If you notice, there's 60 HZ, that's hertz, 60 hertz, and that's the sound you heard in the beginning of this weld. We actually changed the hertz during the process of the weld, and you can see how it choked down. It got narrower. You can actually see the cleaning line of the oxides got narrower until we got to 150 hertz. Okay, we're going to weld a butt weld. And one of the things we want to try to do is we're actually trying to penetrate this. So I'm going to sit and dwell for a little while. Let the heat build up. Let the two metals melt together. And I want it to sink. I want it to sink 100%. So when we finish this, I'll turn the plate over. And you can see the drop through. 
smelling this a little bit hotter than normal, but I do want you to see the penetration. And it's welding clean. You can see the shiny puddle. I'm dabbing, dabbing, dabbing. And because it's eighth inch, you know, I may have to run a second pass to get build up, but that's okay. So you can see it's running clean. Dab, 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 dab. And you notice very tight setup. No gap whatsoever. Okay, so I'm just going to phase out, add some filler because I really, really, really don't want this to crack. And you need to continue to add filler all the way to the end. And I phase out, and we'll take a look at it. Okay, now that we've finished that weld, I want to describe to you and recap exactly what I did. And I want to describe this setup here. I took two pieces, put them together, created a butt weld, and if you'll notice, I've, I've lifted this off the table, and where I started my weld, there's only airspace underneath. I started a puddle, I dabbed the filler material, and as I dabbed the filler material, the puddle sunk. So I visually could see that it was penetrating 100%. Now, what happened when it penetrated 100% was this. The oxide layer reformed. It actually became a thin membrane and it worked in my favor. So what you see here is a little fine line in the center of your weld. That's actually acceptable. This particular part <coughs> would be x-ray quality and if you did a penetrant inspection on that there would be no line whatsoever. We're going to continue to show you some advanced techniques in aluminum. This was part two. We're going to have several more parts. Thanks for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG.